his burning cheeks. Clown, the king of clowns, leave the stage at once. Who is it? It's Cyrano. I was afraid he'd do this. Thrice happy he who hides from pomp and power. Wretch! Did I not forbid you to appear this month? <laughs> Thrice happy he who... He who, indeed. Donkey, say rather, he ha! Be gone. Or must I come and help you off the stage myself? What? Still there? Well, a balmy zephyrs fan his burning cheek. Fat swine, if you dare breathe one balmy zephyr more, I'll fan your cheeks for you. Messieurs, if you will protect me. Proceed, proceed. Go on. Sir, I will not allow you to insult me in this manner. Really? What manner would you prefer? Quiet down there. We'll tolerate no more of this. Go on with the play, mon fleury. This is a Unless these gentlemen retain their seats, my sword may bite their ribbons. Who is this braggart? My cousin, sir. Well, Montfleury, still no exit. Very well, then. I enter with knife to carve this fat, stuffed goose. I pray you do not crowd my scabbard here. She may put her tongue out at you. And I offer one universal challenge to you all. Will all who wish to die please raise their hands? Approach, young heroes. I will take your names. To the first man who falls, I'll build a monument. Who will head the list? You, sir? No. You? Ah, no. Anyone? Anyone at all? Not one name? Not one finger. Very well, then, I go on. Attend to me, full moon. I clap my hands three times, thus. At the third, you will eclipse yourself. Ready? One. How dare you? I demand, I insist, I call upon all the nobles. Two. This is an outrage, you hear an outrage. Nothing on earth will move me from this stage. Three. <laughs> Fair ladies and noble gentlemen. Monsieur de Bergerac, why have you done this to Armand Fleury, an admirable actor? I have two reasons, either one conclusive. First, he is an abominable actor who mouths his verse and moans his tragedy. Second, well, that's my secret. But, but you, you closed the play. It is not a very good play. Huh. And the mere money? Possibly you would like that return to these good people, yes? Yes. Here, catch. Well, monsieur, you are hereby authorized to close our play every night on these terms. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your money will be returned. Kindly pass out quietly. Uh. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Your cousin is an extraordinary man, madame. Oh, I agree. Soldier, poet, philosopher, musician, playwright. All those? Yes. And the best swordsman in Paris. Really? Now, I should have thought the Vicomte here had that honor. Tell me, madame, that uh, comic mask, that nose, presently he will take it off? No, monsieur, he keeps it. And heaven help the man who smiles. Good night. 
Oh, monsieur! Monsieur! Uh, when do you leave Paris? Sir? Why, after what you've just done to Montfleury, did you not know that the Comte de Guiche was his patron? Who is yours? No one. No one? No patron? I said not. But the Comte de Guiche has a long arm. Mine is longer by three feet of steel. Yes, but... But what a scandal! You may I... go now. But... You may go. Well, tell me, why are you staring at my nose? Oh, I was not staring. Does it astonish you? Why no, why, no, I've been careful not to look. Oh, and why not, if you please? It disgusts you, then? But no, I Does never... this color appear to you unwholesome? By no means. Or possibly you find it just a trifle large. No, small, very small, tiny, infinitesimal. What? You accuse me of absurdity? Small, my nose? Why, magnificent, my nose. You pug, you knob, you buttonhead. Know that I glory in this nose of mine. For a great nose indicates a great man. Genial, courteous. Intellectual, virile, courageous. Whilst that face of yours, that blank, inglorious concavity which my right hand finds on top of you, is as devoid of pride, of poetry, of soul, of picturesqueness, of contour, of character, of nose, in short, as that which at the bottom of that limp spine of yours, my left foot. Oh, hell! <laughs> Presently, this fellow will grow tiresome. Oh, he blows his horn. Well, will no one put him in his place? If you will allow me, observe. Monsieur, your nose, your nose is rather large. Rather? Oh, well. Is that all? Well, of course it is. Ah, you... no, young sir, you're too simple. Why, you might have said a great many things. Why waste your opportunity? For example, thus. Aggressive. I, sir, if that nose were mine, I'd have it amputated on the spot. Practical. How do you drink with such a nose? You must have had a cup made especially. Descriptive. Tis a rock, a crag, a cape. A cape? Say, rather, a peninsula. Inquisitive. What is that receptacle? A razor case or a portfolio? Kindly. Ah, do you love the little birds so much that when they come and sing to you, you give them this to perch on? Cautious. Take care. A weight like that might make you top-heavy. Eloquent. When it blows, the typhoon howls and the clouds darken. Dramatic. When it bleeds, the Red Sea. A simple. Uh, when do they unveil the monument? Military. Beware. A secret weapon. Enterprising. What a sign for some perfumer. Respectful. Uh, sir, I recognize in you a man of parts, a man of um, prominence. Or literary. Was this the nose that launched a thousand ships? These, my dear sir, are things you might have said had you some tinge of letters or of wit to color your discourse. But wit, not so. You never had an atom. And of letters, you need but three to write you down. A, S, S. Ass. Hiss, <laughs> puppy, dolt, bumpkin, fool. How do you do? And I, Cyrano, Savignan, Hercule de Bergerat. Vicomte, come. Such arrogance, this scarecrow who... Look at him. No ribbons, no lace. Not even gloves. True. I carry my adornments only on my soul, decked with deeds instead of ribbons, mantled in my good name and crowned with the white plume of freedom. But... Uh... But I have no gloves. A pity, too. I had one, the last one of an old pair, and lost that. Very careless of me. Some gentleman offered me an impertinence. I left it in his face. So be it. You shall die exquisitely. Oh, a poet. Oh, yes, a poet, if you will. So, uh, while we fight, I'll improvise a ballad for you, and as I end the refrain, thrust home. Will you? I will. Ballad of the duel at the Théâtre de Bourgogne between the Bergerac and uh, a barbarian. What do you mean by that? Oh, that? The title. <laughs> Stop 
Let me choose my rhymes. So, here we go. Lightly I toss my hat away, languidly over my arm let fall the cloak that covers my bright array, then out swords, and to work with all. A Lancelot in his lady's hall, a Spartacus at the Hippodrome, I dally a while with you, dear Jackal. <coughs> this brawl, here in the heart, through your ribbons gay, in the belly, neath your silken shawl. Mark how my point floats, light as the foam, ready to drive you back to the wall. Then as I end the refrain, thrust home. Ho for a ride. By your finest way. You break, you cower, you cringe, you crawl. How can I carry your last to say? Show me the turn of my hand for stall. Life with its honey, death with its gall. Show me the turn of my fancy roam, free for a time till the rhymes recall. Then as I end the refrain, rust home. Refrain. Prince, pray God that is Lord of all, pardon your soul, for your time has come. Hats, fling with plan to stroll. Then as I end the refrain. nephew. There's power there. And power here. Young fool. Take an example from me. Twenty years a captain. While others, who know only how to deploy their forces at court, now dangle a marshal's baton. Well, someday I will avenge you, too. Impossible. Come on, let's go to dinner. Dinner? No, not I. Why not? Because I have no money. But the purse of gold. Farewell, paternal pension. Then you have until the first of next month. Nothing. What a fool. Yes, but what a moment. Huh? Pardon, monsieur. A man ought never to go hungry. I have everything here. Please. My dear child, I cannot bend this Gascon pride of mine to accept such a kindness. But I... Yet for fear that I may give you pain if I refuse, I will take something. A grape. One only. And a glass of water. No, clear. And uh, half a macaroon. 
Nothing more? Why, yes. Your hand to kiss. Thank you, sir. I was hungry. Abominably. Tell me. Anything. Why do you hate this Montfleury? A very bad actor. Ah, uh, come now. The real reason. The truth. That fat goat who cannot hold his belly in his arms still dreams of being sweetly dangerous among the women. Sighs and languishes, making sheep's eyes out of his great frog's face. I hate him ever since one day he dared smile upon... Oh, my friend, I seem to see over some flower a great snail crawling. Uh, what? Is it possible? For me to love? I love. Whom? May I know? Whom I love? Think a moment. Think of me. Me whom the plainest woman would despise. Me with this nose of mine that marches on before me by a quarter of an hour. Whom shall I love? Why, of course, it must be the woman in the world most beautiful. Most beautiful? In these eyes of mine, beyond compare. Wait. Your cousin, Roxanne. Yes. Roxanne. Well, why not? If you love her, tell her so. My old friend, look at me and tell me how much hope remains for me with this protuberance. Ah, oh. uh, no, I have no more illusions. Now and then, I may grow tender walking alone in the blue cool of evening through some garden fresh with flowers after the benediction of the rain. My poor big devil of a nose inhales April. And I follow with my eyes where some boy, with a girl upon his arm, passes a patch of silver. And I feel somehow, I wish I had a woman too, walking with me under the moon and holding my arm and smiling. And then I dream and I forget. And then I see the shadow of my profile on the wall. My friend. My friend. I have my bitter days knowing myself so ugly, so alone. Ah, but your wit, your courage. Why, that poor child who just now offered you your dinner. You saw it. Her eyes did not avoid you. That is true. Well, then, Roxanne herself, huh? watching your duel, pale. Pale? Yes. Her lips parted, her hand at her breast, thus. I saw it. Speak to her. Speak, man. She might laugh at me. That is the one thing in this world I fear. Pardon, monsieur. A lady outside asking for you? Monsieur? Do you want I have a message for you from uh, a certain lady. She desires to know when and where she may see you privately. She has certain things to tell you. Certain? Things. She wishes to see me? We go tomorrow at dawn to hear Mass at saint -Roc. And afterwards, where would you suggest? Uh, where? I, uh, where? Well? Uh, I am thinking. And you think? The shop of Ragano? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Ragano, the pastry cook. Who dwells? Who? Uh, Rue Saint Honoré. Uh, Rue Saint Honoré. We are agreed. Seven o'clock. Until then. Yeah. 
I'll be there. Me. To see me. Uh, you're not quite so gloomy. Well, after all, she knows that I exist. Imagine she has asked to see me. So, now you're going to be happy. happy. I'm going to be a storm, a flame. I need to fight whole armies all alone. I have ten hearts. I have a hundred arms. I feel too strong to war with mortals. Bring me giants. Choir, please. Shh. We're rehearsing that here. Thank goodness you're still here. Well, what's the matter? I'm afraid to go home. Why? You know those comic verses I wrote about the Count de Guiche? Cyrano, he's hired ruffians, bullies, a hundred of them waiting for me on the way home. They're going to beat me, cane me. Please, would you permit me to spend the night with you? A hundred men, is that all? Ragano, you're going home tonight. But they are. They're cutthroats. Take this lamp. Forward march. I say, I'll be the man that sees you to your shot. Not you. I want no help from any Yes, a hundred, you're mad. Those are the odds I want. Risk your life for this pastry cook. First, because this pastry cook is a friend of mine. Second, because this pastry cook is also a poet. And most important, if anything should happen to this pastry cook, tomorrow morning at seven, his shop will be closed. Good night.
to annoy me. No, the, the sauce and meat must rhyme. Add a pinch of marigold and thyme. Your house of crust needs a stronger roof. Huh? There's proof. Cyrano! Cyrano! Come in and eat something. Uh, not quite seven. Oh, now, please, Cyrano. A man without breakfast is like... Oh. If she has changed her mind... Oh, she wouldn't dare. We were magnificent last night. And at the theater, too. Then, as I end the refrain... When she arrives, where can we converse undisturbed? Wherever you like. My shop is yours. The little dining room is quite romantic. Trust home! Ye gods, what a line. Then, as I end the refrain... Vanish. Uh -huh. She's come. I told you. Welcome. Uh, pardon, one word. Oh, yes? Have you a good digestion? Oh, wonderful. Good. Uh, here are some eclairs, uh, green puffs, some jelly rolls. Uh, do you like nature? I adore it. Then go out and eat these in the sunshine. Do not return. But I until you have finished them. <laughs> Blessed above all others be the hour when you remembered to remember me and came to tell me what? To tell you that... But before I dare tell you... Are you, I wonder, still the same big brother almost? that you used to be when we were children, playing by the pond in the old garden down there. At Bergerac, those lovely summers. You used to make swords out of bulrushes. And you dandelion dolls with golden hair. In those days, I could tell you everything. And you did everything I wished. Little Roxanne, a sweet tyrant in short skirts and long hair. Was I pretty? Not too plain. Sometimes when you had fallen or hurt your hand, you used to come running to me. And I would be your mother and say, oh, in a very grown-up voice. Now, what have you been doing to yourself? Let me see. Oh, wait, let me see. Still, at your age. Now, how did you do that? Playing with the big boys at the Place de Nail. Come here, please. Such a wise little mother. And tell me while I wash this blood away how many you played with? No, about a hundred. A hundred? Mm, more or less. Tell me. No. Tell me what you were going to tell me, if you dared. I think I do dare now. It, it seems so like those happy days long ago. Yes, I dare. Listen, I love someone. Yes? Someone who does not know. Yes. Someone who loves me too, but is afraid of me and keeps away and never says one word. Yes. Give me back your hand. Why, how hot it is. Yes, he loves me, I am sure of it. Yes. And he is a soldier too, in your own regiment, your company. Yes. And such a man. He is proud, noble, young, brave. Beautiful. Beautiful. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. 
nothing. For this, my hand. Well, I love him. That is all. And I have never seen him anywhere except at the theater. You have never spoken? Only with our eyes. Well, then how do you know? Well, people talk about people, and I hear things, and... And I know. You say he is in the guards. His name? Baron Christian de Nevelet. Genevieve, he is not in the guards. Yes, since last week. He has only lately come to Paris from Normandy. So soon. So soon we lose our hearts. But... Monsieur de Bergerac, I have eaten all the cake. Good. Now go out and enjoy nature. But my dear child, you who love only words, wit, poetry, why, for all you know, the man may be a, a savage or a fool. Not with such eyes. I read his soul in them. Yes, all our souls are written in our eyes. And you have brought me here to tell me this? I do not yet quite understand, madame, the reason for your confidence. They say that in your company, it frightens me. You are all Gascons. We pick a quarrel with any outsider who intrudes himself. Is that what you have heard? I am so afraid for it. Not without reason. And I thought you, if you whom they all respect and fear. You want me to defend your little baron? Will you? Just for me. Because I have always been your friend. And this is what you want of me? Will you be his friend? I will be his friend. And never let him fight a duel? No, never. Promise? I promise. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I knew I could rely on you. Well, now I must go. Oh, you never told me about last night. Why, you must have been a hero. Have him write and tell me all about it. And about himself. Oh, you are, darling. We are great friends, are we not? He must write to me. A hundred men against one. You shall tell me the whole story someday when we have time. A hundred men. What courage! I have done better since. leave this place. Eh? But the whole company is on its way here. Oh, no. They're on my heels. Naturally, I told them all about last night, and they're wild. Here they are. Captain, why did you? Perhaps I can stop them. Eight dead men in the street. Scandalous. You know my edict against dueling, nephew. I expect to have it enforced. Furthermore, I wish to know who was responsible for last night's outrage at the Place de Nel. I understand, Your Eminence. Very well. And now I have news that should be more to your liking. I fear, in confidence, our uneasy armistice with Spain is doomed. My colonelcy? Your commission has been prepared. Oh, thank you, Uncle. Thank you. Oh, one thing more. Last night at the theater, the duel in rhyme, that guardsman with the nose. And de Bergerac, that impossible Gascon. Yes, impossible. His treatment of Montfleury. Abominable. The arrogance with which he closed the play. Incredible. It would be a miracle if the Vicomte survives. Deplorable. What will you do with him, Your Eminence? I? Nothing. I thought I might leave that to you. To me? Yes. Place him somewhere in your service with a comfortable allowance. He looked a little threadbare. You, but your eminence, you detest dueling. Of course I do. Why didn't you prevent it? I should much prefer that Monsieur de Bergerac live by the pen rather than die by the sword. Do you not agree, Antoine? By all means, your eminence, by all means. And then, as I end the refrain, thrust home.
Monsieur de Bergerac. Your Excellency. I have come to express my admiration for both your exploits last night. Indeed. Thank you. My dear fellow, we may have had our differences, but I am disposed to forget them. That is very generous of you, sir. No, truly. You are, it seems, a man of many skills. A rare combination, soldier and poet. Would you care to join my following? No, sir. I do not follow. I am told you have written a play. As you know, my uncle, the Cardinal, is also a dramatist. I might help you there. Cyrano, now at last you can have it performed. Why not? I could take it to him. Really? Of course. Let him rewrite a few lines here and there, and he'll find a theater for you. Rewrite? My lines? Impossible. Uh, but when he likes a thing, he pays well. Yes, but not so well as I. When I have made a line that sings itself, I pay myself a hundred times. You are proud, my friend. You have observed that. Cyrano, see what we found in the street. Plumes dropped in their flight by those fine birds who showed their tail feathers. <laughs> the man who hired those scoundrels, he must be an angry man today. Who was it? Do you know? It was I. I hired them to do the sort of work we do not soil our hands with. Punishing an insolent poet. They ought to be mounted before they spoil. <laughs> what shall we do with them? Sir, will you not return these to your friends? Have you read Don Quixote? I have, and found myself the hero. Be so good as to read once more the chapter of the windmills. Chapter 13. Windmills, remember, if you fight with them, may swing round their huge arms and cast you down into the mire. Or up among the stars. You've done it now. You've made your fortune. He was willing to forget. There you go again, growling. Yes. This latest pose of yours. Ruining every opportunity that comes your way becomes exaggerated. Very well, then I exaggerate. There are certain things in this world a man does well to carry to extremes. Ah, your precious independence, your white plume. What? How do you expect to succeed in life? What would you have me do? Seek for the patronage of some great man and like a creeping vine on a tall tree, crawl upward where I cannot stand alone? No, thank you. Be a buffoon in the vile hope of teasing out a smile on some cold face? No, thank you. Eat a toad for breakfast every morning, make my knees callous, cultivate a supple spine, wear out my belly groveling in the dust? No, thank you. With my left hand, scratch the back of any swine that roots up gold for me, while my right, too proud to know his partner's business, takes in the fee? No, thank you. Shall I use the fire God gave me to burn incense all day long? No, thank you. Struggle to insinuate my name into the columns of the Gazette? Calculate, scheme, be afraid, love more to make a visit than a poem, seek introductions, favors, influences. No, thank you. No, I thank you. And again, I thank you. But to sing, to laugh, to dream, to walk in my own way, free with an eye to see things as they are, a voice that means manhood, to cock my head where I choose, add a word, a yes, a no, to fight, or write, but never to make a line I have not heard in my own heart. To travel any road under the sun, under the stars, nor care if fame or fortune lie beyond the bourne. Yet with all modesty to say, my soul be satisfied with flowers with weeds, with thorns even. But gather them in the one garden you may call your own. In a word, I am too proud to be a parasite. And if my nature lacks the germ that grows towering to heaven like the mountain pine, I stand not high, it may be. But alone. Alone, yes, but why go about making enemies? Watching other people making friends everywhere as a dog makes friends. I mark the manner of these canine courtesies and think, here comes, thank heaven, another enemy.
Yes, tell this to all the world. And then to me, say very softly that she loves you not. Let me be alone for a moment. Sir, now wait. Give us your story of the fight. Presently. No, the story now. Oh, let him alone. There's time enough. I want it now. As an example for that young tadpole sneaking out the doorway. You there! Are you addressing me? Yes, you flat-footed Norman farmer. You wish something of me? Listen, Monsieur de, de, de whatever your name is. De Nevelet. Baron Christian de Nevelet. Very well, de Nevelet. As you are a newcomer here, you should know there is a certain subject, or object if you prefer, that is never mentioned among us. And that is? Look at me. Do you understand? You mean the... No. We never speak that word. To even breathe it is to have to do with him. He has exterminated several whose mere tone of voice suggested... Would you die before your time? Just mention anything convex or cartilaginous. One word, one syllable, one gesture, nay, one sneeze. And your handkerchief becomes your winding sheet. Captain. Sir. What is the proper thing to do when Gascons grow too boastful? Prove to them that one may be a Norman and still have courage. I thank you. Come on, Cyrano, your story! Ah, ah, ah. Now, let me see. Where shall we begin? I set out with our hunks to meet those scoundrels, not knowing where they might attack. No lamps in those narrow back streets. No moon in the sky. Dark. Everything dark. It was so dark, more deuce you could not see beyond. Your nose! Last week. A recruit, eh? <laughs> His name is Christian de Novillette. your hand before your eyes. I marched on thinking how all for the sake of one amateur poet who wrote a verse whenever he took a nose full. Whenever he took a notion, I might antagonize some dangerous man. One powerful enough to make me pay through the nose. Pay the piper. After all, I thought, why am I putting in my nose? Putting in my oar. The quarrel is none of mine. However, now that I am here, I may as well go through with it. Come, Gascon, do your duty. Suddenly, a sword flashed in the dark. I caught it fair on the nose of my blade. Before I knew it, that I was rubbing noses, crossing swords with half a score at once. I had one of them. A nose game! One was sadly. He went down the rest they way. I charged. Nose in the air! I skewed two of them. This on the third. Another lunge, and I parried with your nose. Right out of here, all of you. Go, leave me with you. That pleases me. Why? Come, do you not know I am her brother? Whose? Hers, Roxanne. Brother? You? Well, a distant cousin, much the same. And she has told you? Everything. She loves me? 
perhaps. My dear sir, more than I can say, I am honored. This is rather sudden. Oh, please, forgive me. If you knew how much I have admired yes, you. Yes, 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 and all those nerves. Oh, please. Lit, uh... I apologize. Well, Roxanne expects a letter. From me? Oh, yes, why not? Oh, no. Oh, once I write, that ruins everything. Why? Because any schoolboy could write to her more gracefully than I. I'm a fool. You did not attack me like a fool. No, anyone can pick a quarrel. No, I'm never at a loss for words among men, but with any woman, paralyzed, speechless, dumb. I'm one of those stammering idiots who cannot court a woman. Really? As for myself, it seems to me that, given the opportunity, and if I put my mind to it, I could do that rather well. Oh, if I had words to say what I have here. If I were handsome like you. Together we could make one mighty hero of romance. If only I had your wit. Borrow it then. What? Tell me. Would you dare repeat to her the words I gave you day by day? Send to her the letters that I write? Mm -hmm. I mean, Roxanne shall have no disillusionment. Come, shall we win her both together? For you? Oh, but Sarah, no. Christian, why not? I... I'm afraid. I'm afraid that when you have her all alone, you will lose her. Have no fear. It is yourself she loves. Give her yourself. Put into words my words upon your lips. Will you? Will you? Does it mean so much to you? It means... It means a comedy, a situation for a poet. Come, shall we collaborate? I'll be your cloak of darkness, your enchanted sword, your ring to charm the fairy princess. Think, is the prize not worth the danger? My friend. My friend. Take my heart. I shall have it all the more. Plucking the flowers, we but keep the plant in bloom. Thus do I love thee, my darling. A dozen ways to read that line. Can't you give it some meaning? Any meaning. Thus do I love thee. 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 Who knows your smile has known a perfect thing. You are a white rose wherein love lies in ambush for his natural prey. In the garden of my heart, you are the most... Uh, the most... Fragrant blossom. As the tender sapling thirsts for rain. As the eagle seeks the sky. As the wave hurtles toward the shore. My heart yearns for you. Good, good. You know, you're beginning to have a feel for words. It's words. I'm sick of words. Those are your weapons. How else do you conquer? Yes, but when? When? They're fighting in the north now. You know that. The regiment could be called up any day, and I've never even kissed her. Patience, my boy. Patience. And I've been patient. Why, she sees the Comte de Guiche as often as she does me. You suppose she's playing with me? Making a fool of me? Impossible. How can you say? How do you know? Cyrano, you have her confidence. You could find out. Nonsense, I say. Very well. I'll scout the terrain. But then, Cyrano, intelligently, discreetly. Yes, sir. With finesse. And uh, what do you think of Christian after all these weeks? He's beautiful and brilliant. And I love him. Good. Uh, do you find him intellectual? More so than you, even. Huh? Oh, I didn't mean... No, 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 no. I am glad. No man ever so beautifully said those things. Those pretty nothings. Sometimes he, he falls into a reverie. His inspiration fails. But then all at once he will say something absolutely... Oh. Really? How like a man. You think because a man has a handsome face he must be a fool. Not necessarily. He talks well about uh, matters of the heart. He does not talk. He rhapsodizes, dreams. Only the other night he said to me, 
extemporaneously, mind you. Oh, of course. Take my heart. I shall have it all the more. Plucking the flowers, we but keep the plant in bloom. Well? Mm, Passable. He rides well? Wonderfully. Listen now. Knowing you have in store more heart to give than I define heart rule. Well, first he has too much heart, then too little. Just how much heart does he need? You are teasing me. You are jealous. Jealous? Yes. You poets are all alike. Would you dare criticize these lines? Only believe that unto you my whole heart gives one cry. And writing writes down more than you receive. Sending you kisses through my fingertips. Lady, oh, read my letter with your lips. Uh, yes, those last lines. But he overwrites. Listen to this. Well, you know them all by heart? Every one. Well, I may call that flattering. He is a master. Oh, come. Yes, a master. Ah, a master, if you will. And uh, when do you bestow the laurel wreath? How many prodigies of poesy must this new Hercules perform? I do not know. My friend, you men own the world and all that's in it. Woman is at best a prize, a property valued much the same as a horse or a dog on length of hair and sheen of skin and soundness of teeth and limb. Well, if I must be chattel, then the term shall be mine, and the price, according to my own values, dear. I see. Uh, Christian tells me that you meet tonight. What will you have him speak about? Oh, nothing. And everything. I shall say, speak to me of love in your own words. Improvise, rhapsodize. Be eloquent. But you will not tell him, will you? Perish the thought. Madame Comte de Guiche. Madame. Monsieur. My sentence is all from you, making our love a little comedy. Don't you read? It was a game at first, but now she cares. Ah. Well, thanks to you. Ah. I'm not afraid any longer. I'll speak for myself now. No, undoubtedly. I will. You shall see. Besides, I know enough to take a woman in my arms, and tonight, I will. Christian. Thank you, my friends, and goodbye. Christian, I beg of you. Leave me. You're making a grave error. Go away. So be it. Christian. Roxanne. I am so glad you were early. Let us stay out here in the moonlight. It is so pleasant. Sit down. There, so. Now, speak to me. I love you. Yes, speak to me of love. I love you. Now be eloquent, be brilliant for me. Tonight of all nights. I love you so. You have your thing. Thou improvise, rhapsodize. I love you very much. I ask for cream and you give me milk and water. Tell me first a little how you love me. Very much. Is that all you feel? Your throat. If only I might kiss it. Christian! But, Roxanne, I love you. Again? No, not again. I do not love you. That is better. I... I adore you. 
I know I grow absurd. And that distresses me as much as if you had grown ugly. Oh, please, gather your dreams together into words. I... I... I know you love me. Good night. No, but wait, please. I was going to say... That you adore me. Yes, I know that too. No, I... go away. <laughs> enough to take a woman in your arms. Oh, Cyrano, please. What, and make your love a little comedy? Oh, Cyrano, I cannot live unless I win her back now. This moment. This moment. How the devil am I to teach you now? This mo... Her window. Just help me, Cyrano, help me. It does seem fairly dark. Well, well. That is more than you deserve. Let us try what can be done. Stand over there. Here before the balcony. I'll whisper you what to say. She may hear. Shh. Call her. Roxanne. Roxanne. Who is calling? Christian. You again? I had to tell you. No, go away. You tell me nothing. Please. You do not love me anymore. No, not anymore. I love you ever more, and ever more and more. A little better. Love grows and struggles like an angry child, breaking my heart, his cradle. Better still. But such a babe is dangerous. Why not have smothered it, newborn? And so I do, and yet he lives. I found, as you, sh you shall find, this newborn babe, an infant Hercules. Good. Strong enough at birth to strangle those two serpents, doubt and pride. Why, very good. Only tell me why you speak so haltingly. Has your imagination gone lame? Your words tonight hesitate. Why? Through the warm summer gloom, they grow in darkness toward the light of you. My words are heavy with honey like returning bees, yet they must fly so high. Come nearer then, stand you on the bench. No. Then I'll come down. No! And why so great a no? Let me enjoy the one moment I ever... My one chance to speak to you Unseen. Unseen? Yes, yes. Night making all things dimly beautiful, one veil over us both. You need no eyes to hear my heart. Oh, tonight let it seem as if I speak for the first time. For the first time? Yes. Your voice even is not the same. How should it be? I have another voice tonight, my own, myself. Daring. Why daring? Because... What am I? What is any man that he dare ask for you? Therefore, my heart has hidden behind poetic words and tinseled phrases. But are they not sweet, those pretty phrases? Not enough sweet for you and me tonight. You never spoke to me like this. I tell you, there comes one moment once, and heaven help those who pass that moment by, when beauty stands looking into the soul with grave, sweet eyes that sicken at pretty words. Yes. That is love. Love. I love beyond breath, beyond reason, beyond love's own power of loving. Your name is like a golden bell hung in my heart. And when I think of you, I tremble. And the bell swings and rings. Roxanne! Roxanne! Along my veins. Roxanne. Yes. That is love. Yes. That is love, that wind of terrible and jealous beauty, that dark fire, 
that soaring, blinding music. Yet you may take my happiness to make you happier, even though you never know I gave it you. Only let me hear sometimes, all alone, the distant laughter of your joy. Do you begin to understand a little? Can you feel my soul there in the darkness breathe on you? Oh, only tonight, now I dare say these things. I to you, and you hear them. It is my voice, mine, my own, that makes you tremble there in the green gloom above me, for you do tremble as a blossom among the leaves. You tremble, and I can feel all the way down along this jasmine branch, whether you will or no, the passion of you trembling. Yes, I do tremble. And I weep, and I love you, and I am yours, and you have made me thus. I have done this to you. I, myself. Only let me ask one thing more. One kiss. You ask me for? I, yes. That is to say, I mean... You go too fast, Miss Why not make the most of it? I, I ask. I know I ask too much. Only one. Is that all? All? How much more than all? I know I startle you. I, I ask, I ask you to refuse. Why, why, why? Please, John, be quiet. What is that you say? I am angry with myself because I know I go too far, and so I say to myself, Chris, John, be quiet. Hush, someone comes. Yes, uh, I am looking for the house of Madame Roxanne Robin. This is not the house. That way. To the right. Keep to the right. I thank you, sir. I shall say my beads for you to the very last ring. When is that kiss? No. Sooner or later. <laughs> true, that is true. Sooner or later it must be so, because she is young. You are handsome. Since it must be, I had rather be myself the cause of what must be. Are you still there? Yes. We were speaking of... A kiss. A kiss? And what is a kiss when all is done? A vow taken before the shrine of memory, a rosy dot over the eye of loving, a secret whispered to listening lips apart. Shh. A moment made immortal with a rush of wings unseen, a sacrament of blossoms, a new song sung by two hearts to an old, simple tune. Hush. Why, what shame? No. No shame. Then come. Gather your sacred blossom. Your moment made immortal. Fly. Fly, man. She lived here, Madame Robin. Oh, I thought you said Roland. No, R-O-B-I-N, Robin. Oh, Robin, I see. I'm too old to chase wild geese. My feet Oh, what a shame. Uh, however, I'm sure there's someone at home. What is it? Uh, a letter for the young lady, uh, Madame uh, uh, Roland. Roland? Robin. Madame, a letter for you. 
Yes, yes, I heard. Uh, passing by, cousin, I saw this light. Uh, some matter uh, profitable to the soul. A very noble lord gave it to me. What is it? Uh, Father, this letter concerns you. Mm. Uh, Madame. The Cardinal will have his way, although against your will. That is why I am sending this to you by a most holy man. Intelligent, discreet. You will communicate to him our order to perform here and at once the rite of holy matrimony. You and Christian will be married privately in your house. Be resigned to the Cardinal's command, who sends herewith his blessings. You're very humble and etc. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, you're to be the... Uh, I am to be the bridegroom. Uh, look here, uh, postscript. Give to the monastery, in my name, 120 pieces of gold. 120? Oh, a worthy lodge. A very worthy lord. Daughter, resign yourself. I am resigned. De Guiche is coming. Do not let him enter. Not let him enter. Until we are married, please. Returned from the moon. The fellow's mad. Like a bomb, I tell you, I fell from the moon. Not he. Here. I say the moon. Very well, if you say so. Thank you. Raving mad. Where am I? My dear sir. What place is this? What come? Please let me pass. His face, good heavens, masked. Oh. A robber. Where am I? A lady is waiting for me. So this is Paris. Ah. Fool. Dear old Paris, excuse my appearance. I arrived by the last thunderbolt, a trifle singed as I passed through the ether. Monsieur! Yes, sir? That will do now, I wish... I know, you wish to learn from my own lips the nature of the moon's inhabitants, the character of its surface, if any. I desire no such thing, I... Of course not. Uh, you wish to know by what mysterious means I reach the moon? Well, a very secret affair of state, but confidentially, a new invention of my own. Drunk, too, as well as man. Oh, no, in truth. I have my choice of several inventions. Huh? Yes, several ways to violate the virgin sky. Several? Several. As, for instance, smoke having a natural tendency to rise, blow in a globe enough to raise me. Yes, that makes one. Again, I might construct a rocket in the shape of a huge locust, driven by impulses of villainous saltpeter from the rear, and thus speed upwards by leaps and bounds. Yes, another. Finally, seated on an iron plate, hurl a magnet into the air. The iron falls. I catch the magnet, throw it again, and so proceed indefinitely. Excellent. And which did you adopt? Why, none of them. Yet another, which was. Guess. I can't. Try. An interesting idiot, this. It yet. Why, no, what is it? Alas, you will never know. But no matter, you are free and they are bound in wedlock. Am I drunk? That voice and that nose. Cyrano. Cyrano. This very moment they have exchanged vows. Who? My sincere compliments. You also, my traveler in space. My lord, the handsome couple you and God have joined together. Quite so. Madame, 
kindly bid your husband farewell. Your regiment leaves tonight, sir. Report at once. But the cadets are not called. They are indeed, and under my command. Out there, we may have an accounting. Somehow that news fails to disquiet me. Here are the orders. Baron, deliver this. Christian. The bridal night is not so near. Somehow that news fails to disquiet me. Baron, you have your orders. Son. Take care of him for me. Promise me never to let him do anything dangerous. I'll do my best. I cannot promise. Watch over him always. Make him be careful. Yes, yes, I'll try. Be sure to keep him warm and dry. Yes, if possible. Have him write to me every single day. That I promise you. The situation is simple, gentlemen. We have besieged Arras. The Prince of Spain has besieged us. Consequently, we are surrounded. A fine war, where the besiegers are besieged and starved to death. Yes, but the Marshal has devised a brilliant plan for bringing in food this very night. Now, see here. Spare us the details, Colonel. Merely inform us when the food arrives. True, we are hungry. But why blame me? I am only your Colonel. Oh, yes, I know you disapprove of me. Call me courtier, politician. Well, I can afford your little hates. My conduct under fire is well known. It was only yesterday I repelled a Spanish attack, pouring my men down like an avalanche. I myself led the charge. And your white scarf? Cyrano. Who is he? Who is he? I repeat, Colonel. And your white scarf? Uh, you heard that episode? Yes, I was so far in advance, I was in danger of being captured. But I fought quickly, took off and flung away the scarf that marked my military rank. And so, being inconspicuous, escaped among my own force. Rallied them, returned, and won the day. What do you say to that? Still, an officer does not lightly resign the privilege of being a target. How pleasant for you that you are denied that privilege. Pleasant? Lend me your scarf. With your permission, I will lead the first charge tonight, wearing it over my shoulder. What bluster. You're safe making that offer, and you know it. My scarf lies on the riverbank between the lines, a spot swept by artillery, impossible to reach alive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This bit of white is what I need to make a signal. I was hesitating. You have decided me. Stand or I'll fire! 
Hold your fire. There's a man down there running away. Yes, a Spaniard. But very useful as a spy to both sides. As I was about to tell you, the Marshal has withdrawn more than half our forces here. Fortunately, the Spaniards do not know that. Oh, yes, they do now. And they will attack tonight at this point. To revenge, eh? I make no great pretense in loving you. But since you gentlemen esteem yourselves invincible, the bravest of the brave and all that, why need we be personal? The Marshal needs a diversion, and I serve him in choosing as I choose. As you can see, Captain, the great thing is to gain time, to hold until the Marshal returns. And to gain time? You will all be so kind as to lay down your lives. John? Yes. Roxanne? I should like to say farewell to her with my whole heart for her to keep. I have taken the liberty of... Uh... But wait. Huh? This little spot. Spot? Yes, a, a tear. It is nothing. A poet, while he writes, is like a lover in his lady's arms. Believing his imagination, everything seems real. There's half the charm of writing. Now, I made this letter so pathetic that while I was writing it, I wept. You wept? Why, yes, because it is a little thing to die. But not to see her, that is terrible. And I shall never... You will never give me that. Oh, who goes on the service of the king? Good evening. On the king's service, you? Gentlemen! What are you doing here? Well, we heard rumors at home you were hungry, so we came prepared. The Spaniards adored the fair, but they missed the fowl. Why did you come here into this, this danger? They said in Paris there was no fighting. <laughs> Besides, it was your own fault. Think of the letters you have written me. How many times every day? Every day? Of course. And each one more wonderful than the last. All this for a few absurd love letters? Hush, absurd? Your letters? No, never. Everyone was like hearing your voice that night in the dark, remember? Like your arms around me. I read them over and over. Every page was like a petal fallen from your soul. Like the light and the fire of a great love. Sweet and strong and true. Sweet and strong and true. Oh, my Christian, I came here to ask forgiveness. It is time to be forgiven. Now, when we may die so soon. Forgive me for being light and vain and loving you only because you were handsome. For now, no. I love you for yourself. For what you are. Roxanne. How you must have suffered, for you saw how frivolous I was. And to be loved for the mere costume, for the poor casual body you went about in. To a soul like yours, that must have been torture. No. I understand. You cannot perfectly believe in me, a, a love like this. I want no love like this. I want love only for... Only for what every woman sees in you. I can do better than that. No, it... It was best before. You do not altogether know me. 
I was a child. I am a woman now. If you were less handsome, no. unattractive, ugly even, I should love you still. You mean that? I do mean that. Ugly? Even then. Now are you happy? Yes. What is it? Nothing. Only Cyrano. Cyrano. He has something to tell you. Where are you going? I will return in a moment. Wife, sir. She goes with me? No, sir. She remains. There is still time for her to escape. She stays. Very well. Someone give me a musket. I stay here also. Sir, you show courage. What? Shall I run away and leave a woman? Colonel, my compliments, sir. What is wrong? Wait. What is it? You look so. She does not love me. You think not? She loves you. No. She loves only my soul. No. Yes. That means you. And you love her. I? I see. I know. You wrote her every day. Every day. Every simple. Simple. For a month we've been blockaded here. How did you send all those letters? Before daylight I managed... To face death every day. You love her. Yes. Tell her so. No. Why not? Why? She would love me if I were ugly. She said that? Yes. Now go to her. Nonsense. Do not believe any such madness. Go back to her. You never will be ugly. Go. It is you she loves. That is what we shall see. No, no. Let her choose between us. Don't. Tell her everything. Why do you torture me? Shall I ruin your happiness because I was born with a pretty face? Am I to ruin yours because I happen to have power to say what you perhaps feel? Tell her. She won't try me too far. But I'm tired of being my own rival. I seek what marriage that can be a novel. I beg you. I want her love for the poor fool that I am, or not at all. Oh, I'm going through with this. I'll know one way or the other. Now go. Tell her. Let her choose one of us. It will be you. I hope so. Spanish fires are going out. It begins. I need a scout. Where's Serrano? Captain. Let me go. No, my boy. Serrano knows the terrain. He knows their lines. So do I. Please, allow me. Very well. We must know from which direction the advance comes, their weight and numbers. I understand. Christian thinks. Christian thinks you ought to know that. But I do know. He still doubts what I told him just now. I saw that. Yes, but was it true what you told him just now? It was true. I said that I should love him even if he were. The word comes hard before me. Say it, I shall not be hurt. Ugly? Even then I should love him. Disfigured. Or disfigured. Even grotesque. How could he ever be grotesque? Ever to me. But you could love him so, as much as... Yes, and more. Roxanne. What is it? Are they fighting? What is happening? The Spaniards advance. But there is time. Where is Christian? At the parapet. Oh, of course. What is it that you wish to tell me? Oh, son, believe me, this is difficult, and for once I lack words. Christian asked me to. He told me. Dying. I will not let him. 
Sarah Renault. Did you? Yes, my friend. I have told her. She loves you. Roxanne. Yes, my darling. Christian. He is not dead. Yes. Come, you must go now. Wait a little. He is dead. No one else knew him but you. Was he not a hero? Yes, Roxanne. A heart deeper than we knew. Yes, Roxanne. A poet. A soul magnificently tender. Yes, Roxanne. But he is dead now. Why, so am I. For I am dead and my love mourns for me and does not know. Will never know. Take her away, quickly. Wait. A letter over his heart. Two deaths to avenge now. Christians. My own. Spaniard cried. On and on they came. Then, when all seemed lost, we heard the trumpets of our returning troops. The battle was ours. Lord, oh, you have been fortunate, Monsieur de Bergerac. You have lived while we we waste our youth. There is no war and no hope for any. No hope for any. My son, I have just realized that we are both fools. But mine is the greater folly, for I am an older fool. What is more. Everything I told you was a lie. Another satire for the Gazette? Yes. 
Another glove flung in the face of power? Oh, well, why do you do it, Cyrano? Why do you attack... Stupidity, deceit, corruption. I'm too old to change. I'm an old dog with nothing left but his teeth. Ah, but teeth can be pulled. That can be painful. That insolent wretch, that scoundrel to Belcherac. This time he's gone too far. I swear it, he signed his death warrant. And who will deliver it? His sword is still very powerful, my friend. There are many ways a man can die. Who knows? He may meet with an accident. Soon. Continue to remain here forever in mourning. Forever? Was Christian all that? If you knew him, you would not ask. His last letter still at my heart keeps me warm. And uh, Cyrano, do you see him often? Every week. My old friend takes the place of my gazette, <laughs> brings me all the news. Every Saturday under that tree out there, I wait for him embroidering. The hour strikes, I need not turn to look. At the last stroke, I hear his cane tapping the walk. His satires have made him many enemies. But they still fear that sword of his. No one dare touch him. Mm, that may be so. It is not violence I fear for him, but solitude, poverty. Old gray December stealing on wolf's feet into his darkening room. It seems to me he has worn the same old coat for many months now. Eh, that is nothing strange in this world. You need not pity him overmuch. He lives his life, his own life, his own way. Thought, word and deed free. My Lord Duke. Oh, yes, I know. I have all. He has nothing. Nevertheless, today, I should be proud to shake his hand. Ah, oh, well, adieu. Will I ever see you again? Come whenever you like. Then you have forgiven me. I am here. Do you know, when a man wins everything in this world, when he succeeds too much, he feels somehow a thousand small displeasures with himself, whose whole sum is not quite remorse, but rather a sort of vague disgust. Dry illusions, vain regrets. Yes, now and then, I envy your Cyrano. The sentiment does you honor. <laughs> Madame, I must tell you, it is true that no one has yet dared to attack your friend Cyrano. Nevertheless, at the theater last night, I heard some things. Keep him at home all you can. Tomorrow, when you see him, Tell him to be careful. I thank you. Now, good night, Ragnarok. Sir, no, you're not leaving. You will not have dinner here with me. My regrets. I have a magnificent roast waiting for me, a rare wine, a gift from my publisher. Ah, to be sure. And have you seen Moliere's new play? No. Uh, well, well, it's... What is it? Well, he... he Speak. Uh, he stole a scene from you, word for word. You know, what the devil was he doing there, that one? He stole it bodily. Well, he showed good taste. It uh, played well? Oh, beautifully. They laughed and laughed. How they laughed. Moliere has genius. Christian had good looks. With me, it was always thus. Good night, my friend. Hold oh, there. You. Are you addressing me? Yes, you, monsieur of the long nose. Insolence. Foul mouth scribbler. Man. Liar. Plagiarist. Oh,
doctor? Why pretend? It is very grave. Keep him quiet at all costs. If he attempts to rise, he will die. Shh, shh, Shall I tell you something, sister? Yesterday, Friday, mind you, I ate meat again. Yes, I know. That is why you are so pale. Please come to me to the refectory before you go. I'll make you a great bowl of hot soup. Of course, of course. You are quite reasonable today. Well, perhaps you convert me. Oh, no. Not for the world. Why, now I think of it, that is so. You bursting with holiness, and yet you never preach. Astonishing. And now I shall astonish you. I'm going to let you pray for me tonight at Vespers. Absolutely struck down me. I did not wait for you to say I might. Now, may the devil admire me if I ever hope to see the end of that embroidery. After 14 years, late for the first time. Yes. Yes, maddening. I was detained by a visitor, most unexpected. An old friend of mine. At least a very old acquaintance. Did you tell him to go away? For the time being, yes. I said, excuse me, this is Saturday. I have a previous engagement, one I cannot miss, even for you. Come back an hour from now. Your friend will have to wait. I shall not let you go till dark. Perhaps a little before dark. I must go. Oh? Then tell me now the court news, my gazette. I as well. Let me see. Saturday the 19th, the king fell ill after eight helpings of grape marmalade. Grape marmalade will no longer be served at court. Sunday, the royal pulse is now normal. Monday, everyone was talking about the success of Moliere's new play. Tuesday, the king fell ill after six helpings of marron glacé. Marron Glacé will no longer be served at court. Wednesday, the Comte de Fiesque spoke to Madame de Montglas. She said, no. Thursday, nothing. Friday, Madame de Montglas said, yes. Saturday, the 20th. Cyrano! What is it? Cyrano! Oh, no. No, it is nothing. Really. But... My old wounded Aris sometimes... My poor no, friend. No, 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 it is nothing. It will soon be gone. There. It is gone. We all have our old wounds. I have mine here, under this faded scrap of writing. It is hard to read now. All but the blood and the tears. His letter? Did you not promise me that someday you would let me read it? His letter? You wish to I read? do wish it. Today.
will, Roxanne, because today I die. Allowed. I know that it will be today, my own dearly beloved, and my heart still so heavy with love I have not told, and I shall die without telling you. No more shall my eyes drink the sight of you like wine, Never more with a look that is a kiss. Follow the sweet grace of you. How you read it, his letter. I remember now the way you have of pushing back a lock of hair with one hand from your forehead. And my heart cries out. His letter. Cries out and keeps crying. And you read it so. Farewell, my dear, my dearest. In a voice. My own heart's own, my own In treasure. In such a voice. My love. As I remember hearing long ago. I am never away from you. Even now, I shall not leave you. In another world, I shall still be that one who loves you, loves you beyond measure, beyond... But how can you read it now? And all those 14 years, he has been the old friend who came to me to be amusing. Roxanne. It was you. No, no, Roxanne, no. And I might have known it every time that I heard you speak my name. No, it was not I. It was you. I swear. The letters, that was you. No. And the dear foolish words, that was you. No. And the voice in the dark, that was you. On my honor. And the soul. That was all you. I never loved you. Yes, you loved me. Even now you love me. And why so great a love? Oh, no, no, my own dear love, I love you not. Why were you silent for so many years? All the while. Every night and every day he gave me nothing. You knew that. You knew in that letter lying on my breast. Your tears. You knew they were your tears. The blood was his. Zero! Here. He's here. Oh, what recklessness. No. I knew it. Oh, madame, he has killed himself no. coming here. <laughs> that face is what is it? Nothing. I did not finish my gazette. Saturday the 26th, an hour or so before dinner, Monsieur de Bergerac died, foully murdered. Cyrano, what have they done to you? How fate loves a jest. Behold me ambushed, taken unawares. My noble foe, a lackey, my battlefield, a gutter. It seems too logical. I have missed everything. Even my death. Sisters! Sisters! No, no, do not go away. I may not be here when you return. You shall not die. I love you. No, well, that is not in the story. When Beauty said, I love you to the beast, all his ugliness changed and dissolved like magic. But you see, I am still the same. And I have done this to you. You? Why, no. All my fault, mine. On the contrary. I had never known womanhood and its sweetness, but for you. My mother did not like to look at me. I never had a sister. Later, I feared a sweetheart with mockery behind her smile. But because of you, I have had across my life one whispering silken gown. I never loved but one man in my life. I have lost him twice. I would not have you mourn any the less that good, noble Christian. But perhaps I ask only this. When the great cold gathers around my bones, that you may give a double meaning to your widow's weeds you let fall for him may for a little 
be my tears. Oh, my love. No, not here, not lying down. Let no one help me. No one. Hold me, not me. She's coming. I feel already shod with marble, gloved with lead. Very well, let the old fellow come now. He shall find me on my feet. Sword in hand. Tear it up. He's delirious. I can see him now. He grins. He is looking at my nose, that skeleton. You men, who are you? A hundred against one, eh? I know them now, my ancient enemies. False or dare? Dare to fight this compromised cowardice. What's that? Surrender? No, never. Never. Ah, you do vanity. I knew you would overthrow me in the end. No, I fight on, I fight on, I fight on. All my laurels you have riven away. And my roses. Yet, in spite of you, there is one crown I bear away with me. And tonight, when I enter before God, my salute shall sweep away the stars from the blue threshold. One thing without stain, unspotted from the world, in spite of doom, mine own. And that is my white 